Hi, I'm Georgia. And I'm Simone. And welcome to episode 62 of the Hope Book Club podcast. Well, it's Sustainability Month um, on Hope 103.2 this, this month. And we've been talking about how to build sustainable faith, environment, society, economy, all of that kind of, you know, sustainability in all areas, one step at a time. So we thought we would delve into the complexity of books and sustainability or, you know, publish and sustainability in this episode. It is a really important chat and it's not something that's actually talked about a whole lot. So stick around to the end of the episode. We'll be talking about some practical things that we can do as readers to help in this space besides just using our Kindle. (laughs) So stick around for that. But let's start with some stats, some quick stats on books and sustainability. Now, Sim, you are a stats girl. Absolutely. And you have provided these for me. I love this. Did you know that the pulp and paper industry is the world's fourth largest energy consuming industry? I mean, when I think of fossil fuels, greenhouse gases, like the really big players in the energy industry, paper is not one that comes to mind. Absolutely. But it accounts for about 5% of our total energy consumption in the world. I have a question for you. Have you ever seen paper made from scratch? I have. Have yes. you have you done it yourself? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I did it in Tasmania a few years ago when I went on a trip with my uni friends. And I I think I had like seen the process before, but actually doing it, like it is a long process. So actually when I think about it, like how long it takes to actually make paper, like from pulp. And how many other things you need to make paper. It actually isn't super surprising, but there are some good stats in here as well. Um, There are books being produced using eco-friendly ink, eco-friendly paper. Certain papers that books are now made from have raw materials, um, contain up to 60% uh, cellulose ingredients, so from plants, making them obviously a lot more eco-friendly. And most books in Australia are printed on something called FSC certified paper, which is made of responsibly sourced wood fire, uh, wood fiber, I should say, not wood fire. (laughs) Uh, Because you think about uh, logging and deforestation and everything like that, the publishing industry is a part of that because obviously paper is made from trees. But there are a number also of big publishing players in Australia like Penguin, Random House, Hatchet Publishing that are doing really good stuff. Uh, Throughout this year alone, there have been a lot more environmentally sustainable practices put into place. Uh, Several are improving their their waste practices, finding better ways to repurpose and recycle paper. A lot of international initiatives and guidelines with major um, major publishing uh, companies that are aligning with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which are really great. A lot, uh, Allen & Unwin, Penguin Random House, Hatchet, they have all established uh, a green team, so an either an in-house or a contracted sustainability team to consult on the practices that we're talking about. So I think that's a really important step. I think we kind of talk about sustainability as this blanket kind of up in the clouds term, but sometimes it it really does take intentional work and intentional um, decisions from companies to say, this is something that's important to us. We're not just, it's not just lip service. We're actually going to employ someone to really make a difference. I think that's important. And I love that they also take it one step at a time as well. You know, they're not trying to overhaul the entire industry straight up. They just, they have their goals and they're working towards it. Um, And I love that. And to be honest, those stats, like, and as I was looking into it, it's far more hopeful for a future sustainable, you know, sustainability in books than I was expecting, which uh, for me was amazing because I feel like books, you know, they play a huge role, not just like in other areas of sustainability. You know, we talk about like, you know, they have a cultural impact and they're instrumental in sort of, you know, sustainability of our society, our faith health, especially our mental health, I think. Um, And it would be disappointing to see, you know, that curtailed um, rather than actually finding other ways around it and keeping books there for that sort of sustainability. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, as you touched on, books provide real access to knowledge. It's an important part of holistic sustainability worldwide. We're not just talking about the environment. We're not just talking about education. It does provide that 
holistic well-being, especially mental health. I mean, I think about my own mental health journey and it's not, <laughs> this is just one story and books have quite literally saved me on so many occasions. And I think it's important to acknowledge that, that books have this real important role in sustainability of our own health. Um, so it is important that in their making and creation that the, that, that they have sustainability practices. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And look, Georgia, I have to admit, you know, when I was looking into like the sustainability stuff as an ebook reader, I kind of assumed like it was just way more effective to go environmentally friendly with books that are digital, audio books, all of that. Yeah. And it turns out that's not true. <laughs> Are you serious? Are you saying like paper <laughs> books are better? Am I? Have I been right no, this whole no, time? Hold up, hold okay. up. <laughs> Not quite. So a study um, in 2019 showed, and I'm going to go with music here a little bit because that's the study we've got, but the transition towards streaming recorded music from internet-connected devices has resulted in significantly higher carbon emissions than any previous point in the history of music. Okay. And so streaming music has that very similar characteristics to digital audio, right? Um, it's, you know, it's increased emissions due to electricity used, not just in reading, but in transferring files, the internet use, charging of devices, and the big one is storage, digital storage required. So you think about it's not just out there in nothing. There are in, There's massive digital storage required to keep all of that stuff that's on the internet there for us. And we talk about, you know, the cloud and things like yeah. that, but there has been a lot of talk, especially in the last five to 10 years about your digital footprint. Yeah. And a lot of that starts with managing your storage and yeah. looking at what needs to be deleted, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So the fact that books, especially, you know, being such large files and especially audio books, I can mm -hmm. imagine that they would it take up a lot of storage. They take storage and you need servers, you need um, storage farms to be able to, and that takes a whole pile of electricity, a whole pile of digital and electrical, like electronics that we're still working out how to, I guess, uh, sustainably not just source, but sustainably create, but recycle mm. all of that. Um, and so, you know, books, we kind of, I think we have to acknowledge that, you know, there is books are physical books, digital books, audio books, all of that are not necessarily worse or better than each other. They have each have their own individual issues with sustainability and pros with the sustainability. And so, you know, we might be able to be digital may, may at this point still be a little less impactful than print books again, depending on how you're sourcing your print books. Mm. Um, so it is a complicated issue. Okay. So we know that there are issues, shall we say, in the book <laughs> industry, whether you're dealing with print publishers, whether that's uh, digital, you know, e-readers or audio books. But what is really encouraging for me is that here in Australia, we really are making great strides to improve things. So let's get to a top five fun ways that we as individuals, I mean, the publishers, they are doing their thing yeah. and that is definitely important because they have a lot of the, the manpower, right, to really change yeah. things. But we as individuals, we can yeah. still do stuff today. So let's, yeah, talk about the things that we can do on our own sustainability reading journey, which I didn't even know was a thing until today. <laughs> um <laughs> When it comes to reading. Yeah, I love that because it can seem overwhelming, but let's focus one step at a time. And what is your first idea? That okay. You have? So number one, and I think this is birthed out of this episode, is just be aware of the books that you are buying. Be aware of who they are being produced by. Be, uh, be aware of who they're being sold by uh, and what those businesses are doing to be more sustainable. So obviously this starts with the publishers and there is information out there. We're going to link the reports uh, that all the stats came from in the show notes. It's a really great um, independent report on books in Australia. So look at the publishers, but also look at um, where you're buying books. So if you're buying books from, you know, big department stores like BW or Kmart, Fine, affordable ways, definitely, but just look at what those businesses are doing in their own sustainability practices, right? Um, could be better buying from small independent bookstores. We know that a lot of the smaller businesses are actively doing yeah. really great stuff in the sustainability space. So just do a bit of research. Obviously, you need to do what's best for you in the moment, but just weigh up the pros and cons. I love that. And also, especially I think with that, you know, some of the big businesses 
are doing great sustainability oh, things. hundred percent. Amazing. And sometimes if they're closer, you're not having to use fuel. Like, so it is sort of, yeah, weighing things up, figuring out what's going to be best, but just being aware of it. Um, for me, I want to start oh, like – and I kind of do this with my friends, but doing it properly, hosting a book swap. Oh, okay. Like a proper event. With your friends. Yeah. So you can do like a full event. You can like, so imagine, I guess, like a book fair, but you do it on a smaller scale. You get your friends over who also love reading. You each have a little stall. That's each so have cute. like a little stall. You can have some like, you know, drinks, some food, some make it an event. You know, if you really want to, um, set up a little space where you can sit down and like you can start to read a little bit and be like oh I'm 15 pages in yes yes I do want to read this one <laughs> and you can grab that and just swap between your friends um rather than doing you know rather than going and buying more books or buying things that maybe if your friend has recommended grab it from them mm-hmm. question for you you said you do the book swap quite a lot yeah one thing that I cannot get right is I give a book to a friend <laughs> and then it disappears from my life. And it's yeah. neither one of our faults because I forget about it as well. Yeah. Um, how do, do you have a, a tracking system? <laughs> Look, I'm going to be honest. I have a very small number of books that I'm really precious about and they don't get included oh, okay. in the book swap. Um, I feel like for the rest of it, I just look at it as it's got a new home for a while and if it doesn't come back to me, it doesn't come back to me. It's meant to be there and maybe it goes on its own journey um, and gets to, you know, go to many other people as well. All right, number three, we talk a lot about libraries and how amazing libraries are, which they are really sustainable. Please use your libraries. But if you have a lot of books like me, you can actually become a library. You can become a library for your friends and community. And I know this is going directly um, (laughs) against what I just said about how I never get my books back from my friends. But I feel like if I had a proper library system with a stamp, like in a library card situation, maybe I could implement fines. No. (laughs) Look, this is all things we actually need to work out because we have some very like so – you all know we love our books, we love our reading, and we had Brayden on earlier this year who is um, also a book lover and has had to move away. So he donated some of his books to us before I he know. left. And we have now suddenly got here a whole pile of books um, and we thought, you know what, there are a lot of people in the Hope office that love reading. So we're starting our own library here. and A Hope Office Library. Hope Office Library with all of the books. So we're definitely getting to explore that dream of being librarians ourselves and working out how to make that work. I know. I feel like does one of us need to be the strict librarian and one of us needs to be like the the bags on the the really nice one? No. (laughs) Okay, fine. I think I think I could do the strict one really well, actually. I already did talk about finding my friends, so clearly I'm fine with that. Um, (laughs) But look, if you have any um, suggestions for us, if you're a librarian, please let us know. Uh, Jump on our Facebook group, Hope Book Club on Facebook, and give us some (laughs) suggestions. We're going to be asking because we definitely need some tips. So while we, you know, talking about libraries, using libraries, absolutely great, wonderful. One of the things I want to highlight with libraries, digital libraries. So one of the things that is wonderful about eBooks and all of that and the way that I often read is like I can go to the library from my own living room um, and so so many libraries, public libraries also have like a digital catalogue and you can borrow digital versions of the books. Um, so definitely think about that. Like, you know, going to libraries obviously is an amazing way to kind of reduce the footprint, um, support your local community as well. Mm. They libraries provide so much more than just books, but they also need us to be wanting to use them for books yeah. to continue as well. <laughs> so it's... just borrow all forms of media. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's just it. They have they have DVDs. Mm-hmm. If you're still watching, I don't think I even DVDs. have a DVD player at home. I no, I definitely don't. I don't think even in my laptop or anything. Yeah, like, there's no. no way to play those DVDs. Uh, but for some people, that's still, um, you know, the way that you watch watch movies, and that's awesome. And so there's libraries. They have so many options, and they also have a lot of programs to get kids into reading, mm-hmm. getting them interested, getting them excited. It's also a really 
uh, I guess, sustainable way to go and spend a couple of hours. So you can go, kids can read in the spaces in there. You can sit in there and read for a bit. And, you know, you're all using the one electricity in the one space that, you know, was already being used rather than the electricity and um, carbon footprint at home. Perfect. And it's all free. Which is even better in this cost of living crisis. Um, Number five, uh, our final tip for readers is just be aware of uh, your electronic usage, your electronic usable and how that can be limited um, via digital or audio books. It's kind of what we've touched on, but I think we'd end on that tip. Also, make sure you recycle your digital devices. If you have an old Kindle, if you have an old phone, um, old batteries from things, the great thing about libraries, most of them actually have um, a mobile phone recycling service in them. Um, it often are connected with charities. Um, I know, for example, my local library has a program where you uh, – give your old mobile phones, they repurpose them and um, they give them to a domestic violence program for um, people escaping um, domestic violence, which is really, really awesome. So definitely just check out the library and or just local council programs, ways that you can recycle those digital devices because they are terrible in landfill and start to leach out all kinds of terrible things into the soil. So definitely don't do that. All right. So we've talked about general tips, Sim. What is your next personal small step on your sustainability reading journey that you'll go off and um, try and implement soon? Yeah, because I am I'm much more of an ebook reader. I find it easier to read that way. All of that. I'm decided I'm going to start looking and be much more intentional about looking into the eco efficient ways to use devices. Um, looking at what ebook publishers are working on making their storage and delivery systems more sustainable, and trying to prioritize that over just randomly choosing books um, and r- publishers to, to work with. Um, and then obviously just the actual devices as well. You know, next time I do need to start looking for an e-reader, uh, I'll be looking at sort of ones that are doing work on being more sustainable. For sure. I think for me, uh, I'm on the other end, uh, very much a, a print book girly. Um, but and I know I've said this on several different occasions, but I feel like I'm actually going to stick to it this time and try and limit my book buying, at least for a few months. There are so many books in my house that have not been read. And I think I just need to either get through them or um, donate them or, you know, maybe donate them to the Hope Office Library. Um, I have been saying that for ages, but I think this episode in particular and hearing these stats and just hearing how powerful the publishing and book industry can be in this space, um, it's kind of empowered me as like, I'm just one reader, but you can actually really make a difference in, in your own life. So yeah. Yeah, I love that. That's amazing. Well, we hope you have found some ideas for your next step. And if you would like to look at some of the reports that we referenced, as Georgia said, um, they will be in the show notes um, and all of that information that we've covered, um, reports, information, all of that will be linked. And we'd love for you to be a part of our community as well. As we mentioned, uh, we do have a Facebook group. So if this is your first time listening, you can join the Hope Book Club on Facebook. That is going to be linked in the show notes as well. And you can also find out what book we will be reviewing next up there. We would also love this podcast to reach more people. And the way to do that is to rate, review, subscribe and share it with your friends. Just send them a message, say, hey, I think you'll love this episode. That is how this community grows. And we're actually so excited to announce that we have uh, gained over 100 members now in the the Facebook group since uh, the start of this year. So thank you. Thank you so much for listening, um, for sharing all of this stuff with your friends. Uh, Until then, stay reading. We'll catch you next time. Sim, I believe you've got a quote to end on. Yes, and I am probably going to offend all of my French ancestors right now, but from French poet Charles Baudelaire, a book is a garden, an orchard, a storehouse, a party, a company, by the way, a counsellor and a multitude of counsellors.